This is the Emotiva MR1. It is their first home theater receiver in one box. It's quite heavy. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's see if this big thing is worth the price of admission. If you know anything about Emotiva, you know that their home theater department is revolved around separates. Separate processors, separate power amps, and within those separates, they have different tiers. They have the Basics line, which this fits into the Basics line. The Base X line is their entry level, but it's not really entry level because it pretty much is better than most companies' premium levels. Beyond that, you have the XPA series of amplification and their module, so you can go two channel all the way up to, I think, 11 channel, maybe even more. And then you even have their differential amplifiers. They're push, pull. Regardless, every Emotiva component that I've reviewed, I've loved. Maybe with the exception of the CD player. I still love the CD player, I just wish it played gaplessly. Everything is built very well. They're built out of metal, they have huge toroidal transformers, and they're designed like stuff used to be designed in the 70s, 80s, except now they have technology. This actually uses a Class H power supply. And you should see the size of the toroidal transformer in here. It's about the size of a bunt cake. I'm not even kidding. I think Emotiva is putting out a video today about this too. They, you should go check it out because the, just to see the size of the toroidal transformer. Bunt cake. I don't know what flavor it is. It's covered in tin foil though. What's on the back? On the back, there's a lot going on, obviously. So we're gonna go through exactly what is on the back of the MR1 from Emotiva. Let's get started. Over here, we have where the subwoofer connects. So we have either two balanced subwoofer outputs or two single-ended RCA outputs. If you look at the analog inputs, there's one, two, three, four, Four analog inputs. Over here is your DAC. You have two optical inputs, two coaxial inputs. However, there's also a secret. There's a USB input right over here as well for all your USB DAC needs. Then you have the antenna for the Bluetooth. Right next to that, you have the Emo Q mic. So right here is where you're going to plug the mic in to do the room setup room a little bit of room correction levels distances things like that i kind of wish this was on the front but i'm not going to complain because it works just fine it's just that this thing is so big i barely i mean i barely fit it into my little entertainment center upstairs it's kind of like putting eight pounds of fertilizer in a five pound bag i got it to work though luckily it, luckily the feet just barely fit it was kind of hanging off the edge but it was never in any peril, though. It was fine. Then you have a USB update. This is for firmware updates. RS-232 serial port down there. Down here you have six regular HDMI and then two HDMI outputs. One of those is an eARC to get it from back from your TV. Mm -hmm. Underneath that, you have preamp outs for every channel. So this thing has 11 channels internal. If you want the additional two channels, you're going to have to use an external amplifier with that. 11 channels internal. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Speaker outputs. If you noticed, these are kind of at an angle. And when I pulled it out of the box and I took a look at it, I also saw this in Austin. When I pulled it out of the box, I'm like, okay, well, that's different. Not only is it different, it's extremely convenient. Because normally, they're just lined up right next to each other. This spreads out your speaker cables a little bit better. So it's easier to get it back into a cabinet or small entertainment center that I should have probably cut the back out of to get this in. Makes it easier to get them in, get them out, and organize them. Also, it minimizes the chances that you're going to short something out. Now, I would recommend banana clips, banana plugs, to go in here, but you can put bare wire in here if you want to or spades if you want to. Solid speaker binding posts. And then over here you have your IEC connector palette. 
So, this thing weighs 50 pounds in the box, out of the box. 58 pounds in the box. Why is it so heavy? Well, because it puts out a bunch of power. This thing puts out 180 watts into 8 ohms and 200, hold on, 290 watts into 4 ohms with 2 channels driven. With all channels driven. 11 channels driven. This thing is 100 watts into 8 ohms, 130 watts into 4 ohms. And there's not many home theater companies that rate their AVRs at all channels driven. So you have a monumental amount of power just internally, but for whatever crazy reason you want to up the game, you need more power with preamp outs on every channel, then it, well, it doesn't make it a snap because you're going to have to have a big amplifier, but at least you have the option. I don't know. Some AVRs have preamp outs for maybe left and right, maybe the center channel. But what this really is, is it's a receiver, but it's also an AVR processor. I had to sit down because it was so heavy and I was getting tired from standing up. Let's talk about the remote control. This is the remote control. It's very large. It's a good size remote control. It has a good weight to it. The front is so each each button is not depressible inside like a frame so one of the remote controls that i just love 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 from emotiva is their cd remote control it's like a metal remote control and each individual button depresses within a frame this is kind of all one piece that's laid in here kind of rubbery but not individual all one piece with a receiver that has this much juice and this much functionality and sounds this good i get it you're not going to be able to have like the top end a luxury remote control experience but this remote control has a secret what is that secret it's individual trims for different channels so on the fly you can see right here in the middle you have center up and down over to here you have height up and down over here you have surround up and down and then you have subwoofer up and down so instead of having to dig into the menus just on the fly beep, 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 you can hit it and i love that because different different sound mixes on different movies and tv shows all are done well differently so netflix is netflix always has dialogue pretty squished on their original movies so I like to pop up the center channel a little bit when I'm watching a Netflix show so I can understand what they're saying, which is important to me. It helps me to connect with this material. Another thing I love about this receiver, and some people actually might see this as a negative, is there are not a ton of options when it comes to the different sound modes. I think there's five or six. There's pure, there's direct, which I just left it in because it lets the source material choose what type of up mix or mode that it's in the important thing is that all of the important sound modes are covered for me it's actually refreshing to see that there are not 15 different dsp modes on this the ones that are in there are done well and frankly i don't think most people are going to need anything other than what's already included in the mr1 i actually think it's great because i can just hit the mode button a couple of times and get to where I want instead of having to basically go through 15 cycle through 15 different DSP programs to get to where I want to be let's talk about setup setup is pretty straightforward it comes with a microphone it guides you through it if you've ever set up an AVR receiver before it's going to be old hat to you now the one thing that people may complain about is the graphical interface it's a little bit old school it's a lot of it old school and I personally don't care because I don't really care. I would rather have my receiver sound awesome than the graphical interface look really modern and awesome and have pretty pictures. Okay. And it's not just Emotiva that has some simple looking setup menus. There's a Denon that I had that looked like it was straight out of the Nintendo era, not like N64. I'm talking about original eight bit. Okay. 
As I mentioned before, you have to hook up the mic on the back on the back of the receiver. So you may want to do the room setup before you get this thing in its home in your rack or in your home entertainment system setup. I ran this and just left it alone. And miraculously, it sounded well, great. You can go in and it takes a little bit of digging to get into the specific EQ that is put on each speaker. But if you just go into EQ and the Emo EQ, you can go through each channel and can see exactly what the EQ is. And then if you do another click to the right, you'll actually see the EQ curve. It does list the different frequencies and then the Q, and you can adjust the Q, and you can adjust the frequencies, I think, and you can adjust the levels. So basically, the EQ is unlimited. However, you have to be a bit of a power user to really figure that out and be able to dial things in just right. If there's a level, for instance, let's say 2K for me is a little bit too high, I can bring that down. But this is the first receiver that I've ever run the room setup that I haven't immediately felt the need to go in and start changing the EQ settings. It does distances and everything else. You also set up what type of speakers you have. Upstairs, I have a 5.2.2 system. So that's two subwoofers, two Dolby channels, and then a regular five channel surround system. And you select whether or not they're in ceiling Dolby or whether or not they're kind of firing up, upward firing Dolby. It's really easy. If you've set up AVR receivers before, it's going to be a snap. If you haven't, just go through it a couple of times, you'll figure it out. But the simplicity of the user interface is also one of the best things about this AVR receiver because it's easy to change things and it's stable. I ran eARC into this and I never had one HDMI issue. What are my final thoughts? Final thoughts is I love it. It's metal. It's built like a real component. I would challenge anybody to go check out a $1,500 to $2,000 receiver and feel the build quality. Metal faceplate, metal construction, huge toroidal transformer. People have complained in the past about the blue LEDs. Well, Emotiva has you covered. If you want to, you can use the dim function right here. Maybe turn down the blue, intense blue light. I personally like it. I like to be able to see what I'm looking at, and I can definitely see what I'm looking at on the MR1. If you want to turn it off though, you can turn it off. It's big, but it needs to be big. Can you imagine having 11 channel, 11 channels of this amount of power? Done correctly, it's gonna take up a little bit of real estate. It does take up less real estate though if you had a separate processor and then an amplifier. Even though it's big, it's smaller than the alternative. From a sound perspective, I was simply blown away when it came to music. Most of the time, AVRs lack the music. They, do they don't scratch my music itch. I can play around with them with Dirac or with other things like that and get music sounding good. This legitimately sounds like an Emotiva two-channel amplifier because I think fundamentally it is an Emotiva two-channel amplifier amplifier. It just has nine extra channels of amplification in it. I think the XPA power supply, I think, is what's in here. So they have trickled down a bunch of XPA technologies into this thing. Price. I haven't really mentioned it. It's $19.99, which sounds like a lot. However, if you look at the amount of power that this is putting out compared to the competition, quite frankly, I don't know really any other competition that is really playing in the same ballpark as the MR1. Fundamentally, this is a separate home theater system in one box. It sounds incredible. M most of the time, I actually have a two-channel dedicated system right next to my AVR system, simply because most AVRs don't sound great. The Pioneer VLX VX305 sounded okay after I ran Dirac for music. But if you're a music lover, you don't need you don't need a separate two channel setup. Some people will say that this lacks some features. I will say that the lack of features is actually a feature because you're more likely to use the features that are included in the MR1 
than the laundry list, the cacophony of features on other AVRs. It's simple, you have on the fly trim controls, and the, the name of the game is to enjoy the movies, right? Or TV shows, whatever you're watching. And I find myself, often with other receivers, simply continuing to dig within the menus, and it drives my family crazy if we're then in the middle of Elf, and I'm trying to turn up the height channels a little bit more so I can hear Buddy the Elf do something, like when he throws something off the ceiling, hear that better. Point being is I enjoyed what I watched. Movies, TV, if I needed a little bit more dialogue. C plus, but this is an A plus. This is a fantastic product. It's not gonna be for everybody because of the size. It's not gonna be for everybody because of the price. But if you are into home theater, if you are into movies, and you have been struggling to find a one box solution that is gonna check all the boxes for music and movies, this is it. I don't, I don't know why anybody would actually need to add more levels of amplification on this thing outside of the two that need it. It's remarkable. I wish the remote control was a little bit better. I get it, I understand it. I wish the graphical interface was a little bit better, but I get it, it doesn't bother me at all. I love it, absolutely love it. I think it's uh, incredible. It's available today, so you can order these right now. I think they're in stock at Emotiva. And I appreciate Emotiva sending this out to me. It is wonderful and I'm sad to see it go back. However, I do have an RMC1, that, but I need to get some more amplification in my XPA. Anyway, if you're new here, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Over 620 videos, so there's gonna be something out there for everybody. If you wanna support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have patron only Zooms, patron only Discord, patron only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. I will link the MR1. That will be an affiliate link, which means if you click and you buy, I do get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more. You can also sign up for Amazon Music, Rune, Tidal, links in the description. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu unless you're using your MR1. Binge listen and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.